Yes, sir. Thank you. Happy birthday, David. Yes, thank you very much. Is it sound recording as well? Pardon? Is it sound recording? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What am I supposed to say? Come on and hear. Come on and hear. Alexander. There she is, the, the, the driving force behind the whole thing. That's lovely. How about? Thank you, Val. David, uh, can I point this thing at you? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Happy birthday, David. Yes, thank you very much. Is it sound recording as well? Pardon? Is it sound recording? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What am I supposed to say? Uh, well, uh, make sure that your telephone is definitely off. I'll give you another one. Here's to each and every little thing, your little thing and my little thing. And if your little thing ever needs something, remember my little thing's not doing anything. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Thank you very much. Because 
Among all the relations I have, none of them managed to turn that down a bit. So I have the whole thing to myself for at least ten years. It's very cheap for you. The, the Lucy Baldwin nursing home, I've never remembered if she either sponsored it or owned it. But on the following day, she did her monthly visit to Mrs. Baldwin. Now, as Geoffrey started off with history, you remember, she had been a Prime Minister's wife, and she was to become another prime, the same Prime Minister's wife during the abdication. My father was a baker by trade and he supplied the Baldwin household with bread. So that's the connection. Some 60 years later, when I'm with my conservation group on a holiday, we do the three choirs cathedrals, and we're walking down the aisle in Worcester Cathedral, and there, to my surprise, because I certainly did not know this, lie Stanley and Lucy Baldwin, incarcerated in the tomb, and their stone is in the aisle. And I walked up to it, and much to the amusement of the group I was with, the wife said, Good afternoon, man. Fancy seeing you again after all these years. The last time we met, you forgot the silver spoon. It, it was a good connection. If when I drop off the birch, you get a plaque, it's number 13 High Street, Starport on the yeah. over the shop. The level in difference, difference in level between the shop and the bakery was two steps. And if they wedged the door open, my playpen was put at the top of the steps. So, because, you know, staff were a bit short in those days, they only had one girl in the shop. They kept the shop open until nine o'clock the night before, so my mother must have been very tired, Dessa. But when people came into the shop, if they came over to the playpen and made a fuss on me, I would go to them burp and carry on and just enjoy the attention. If they failed to do so, I'd get my rattle apparently and bang it on the on the on the things <laughs> on the paper. That's how it goes. Now in this intervening 80 years, one sort of develops interests in life, and one or two of them seem to have got mentioned. Amateur theatricals is one of them. Um, flying in fast aeroplanes is probably had his audition, had a particularly large crowd, a real good friendly large crowd. And amongst them were two people who sat right by the photo desk at the front of the uh, of the terrace there on the back of the terrace. And I got into conversation with them. And I don't know, it somehow turned around to aeroplanes and flying. And this lady said to me, My husband is a monarch captain. Oh, is he? I said, Well, well, well. And so we started to talk a bit of shop. Amongst all this, then the word Concord got mentioned. We were married on the Concord. Yeah. Oh, oh you, I said, oh, I didn't know, but I do know it now. <laughs> The one in Manchester used to stand outside. It now is in a hangar, and it is available for corporate events. You can take either the inside of the aircraft or have a meal under the wing. We in the Puebla crowd know somebody who has certainly done that, but she had her second wedding ceremony on board the Concorde. Chatter up! I'll tell you who she is in a Stand up. <laughs> because you've all given me an album today. She has got the most fabulous wedding album. And one of the photographs in it is this lovely lady stepping through the front door of a Concord. And you know, I have to yeah. down because it isn't very big. We're all in full bridal gear. And when she showed it to me, I said, well, that's door one left. That's where I used to work. Yeah. Which is where I've always said to you, the hair wore off because I had to touch the ceiling. Because, you know, if I stood up straight and didn't slouch, that's what happened. Wonderful. So I saw this and I thought, now that takes me all back to an event which I've told some of you before. The other side happened. It's the very same spot where I endured the only time an overshoot in Concord. And this is coming into London, we're all coming down on the ascent. Okay. And from that seat you can only see over passengers' heads and out through the window and you can see the green fields of Epsom and all the other places floating by. And we're one right over the runway and all of a sudden up into the sky we go through a 90 degree turn. And I turned to my stewardess next to me and I said, look at all their knuckles, they've all gone white. And all their faces have all gone, ah! You know, it was a dramatic event in everybody's life. Yeah. Last Sunday morning at coffee, the blood's wrist cut it down. Didn't we talk about Concord noises? Again, this is without any profit from the conversation. Last Saturday, on the theatre terrace, some good gentleman comes in and books a ticket for the pantomime. Last Sunday. He sits down because his knees are hurting, and I'm sort of <laughs> commiserating with him because I know exactly about hurting knees. Yeah. And then he starts to talk about this and that, and I said, where do you come from? And he said, oh, stays. 
She's playing Mrs. Vassan in Waldorf Salon. Her name is Melody. Just tell her that I've told you this, but when you look in the album, uh, unlike other sets, they, she was telling me the cleaners told her when they got there that they washed the aeroplane down for her, and then they polished it. They get on the wings and polish it and uh, clean it. They take the front row of seats out in the rear cabin so that the bride and groom uh, have got space enough to kneel uh, down uh, and that the Reverend Father, whatever religion he might be, stands in the vestibule between the two loos. The most <laughs> but that's the only space there is because it's all rather tiny. The, the people in the front cabin all turn round in their seats and face off, and the people in the back cabin are facing front forward so they can see anyway. And so they went through this whole wedding ceremony and then went down outside the aircraft, all gleaming and polished like goodness knows what was a lovely open roller. And the chauffeur standing by it, all dressed up, young and handsome he was too. And now off to, you know, wherever they went for, what wasn't done, it was back home to watch the kids, because they'd already got one, I think, I'm right in telling you. It's, it's a very, 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 very good memento of where I used to work, and I thought, this is, this is come home. Let me tell you about something else. Keeping a secret. Yeah. Keeping a secret. As you know, I've only ever had one paid night in a theatre. Oh, I earned four dollars for walking on as an extra at the Metropolitan oh. Opera House in New York. Oh, and oh. I was a Calabinieri and Cabaret well done. The person who was responsible for that was somebody that I met through another connection with a person on board who was four out of seven stage managers of the Met. No. So after this was all over, he said, did you see the ice cream seller in the Pagliacci? You know, Cam and Pam always go together in opera houses. And uh, the Pagliacci stops off with an ice cream seller going across the stage saying, gelati, gelati, gelati. <laughs> At the Met in New York, it had been, it had been, because this is quite some time ago, nearly the same person for something like 50 years. For this particular person, no. it was his birthday. And they all said to themselves, we've got to celebrate, because not only has he been here as an extra for 50 years, but he's 75 years of age. He does not speak one single word of English. He came across on a boat, landed at Ellis Island, went into the bowels of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, where he became a kitchen porter, where he still lives in, and his only hobby was walking up at the Met. <laughs> How could they keep it a secret that they wanted to honour it? They thought out the most ingenious way, bear this in mind. When he came to the part of the performance, they said to everybody, now we're going to get ready, we're going to have a party, somebody is coming in. And so instead of keeping it a secret, he involved himself in all this. He was carrying chairs, he was putting the table out, he was putting food out, there was bottles of wine, the whole shebang. Now you've probably none of you ever been to the back of the Metropolitan well, Opera House, but mm. the, the roadway goes down a ramp. So they opened the back door. The huge, huge, biggest thing the restaurant or bigger. Because of course when it's two houses and they're different offers, a whole set of scenery is going to take out and a whole set of scenery brought in. And so as they all sat on the stage, all the company, all the orchestra, <coughs> all the chorus, they'd all changed. And he was sitting there all in his car, realizing what was going on. Some headlights appeared at the top of the ramp. Yeah. And a beautiful car came down and stopped and out got the chauffeur and out stepped um, what's called uh, Joe Sutherland. Oh, oh he thought to himself, it's for her. She came straight across to him, went down on one knee, took hold of his hand and sang happy birthday to him oh. in Italian style. <laughs> He burst into floods of uncontrollable tears, apparently, and poured himself silly for days and days and days. But what a lovely went. But they kept it a secret from him. We've come to discover she can't keep secrets. <laughs> Folks, I've watched a wizard on enough. Um, just a very, very big thank you. But thank you, principally, for supporting Photo. Val, thanks for organising yeah, it. And yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.